Hey, hello everyone. Welcome in this MVA modules about cross-platform development with Visual Studio. Hey, 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 Eric. How's it going? Uh, fine. And you? Fine. Great. <laughs> okay. Hope so you thanks, too. thanks everyone actually for joining us. And uh, let's get to it. Yes. I guess people want to know what we want to talk about. Okay. Actually, we want to talk about us first, right? Oh, How really? about you introduce yourself? <laughs> Well, I'm a, a, long, a, a long Microsoft T series. Uh, I come from France, as you can hear with my accents. Uh, right now, I'm working for Microsoft Open Technology uh, as a technical evangelist, and I really enjoy that. <laughs> awesome. And I'm Olivier Bloch, and I'm uh, also a French guy. Yeah. And I uh, work for Microsoft Open Technology as well, and we we'll tell you a bit about what MS Open Tech is about and why actually we're interested in that cross-platform development story. And uh, I've been actually in, uh, in the Microsoft world for the last, what, seven, eight years. And before that, I was developing embedded systems. Yep. So I love gadgets. I yep. like to make software run on them. I remember that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, before we get into the actual topic, we want to set the expectation. So what kind of audience should we expect here? Uh, today we are going to talk about web development. So of course, uh, HTML5, JavaScript, CSS developer are more than welcome. Um, but if you have some kind of allergy for the web, stay connected because we are going to change your mind about that technology today. Exactly, and so um, we also want to drive the discussion to uh, explain how we think web technologies are great for doing cross-platform development. Uh, this is not the only solution, and we'll see what kind yep. of solutions exist yep. today, but web technologies are a good solution. And as a matter of fact, MS Open Tech is very much involved in co uh, contributing to the Apache Cordova project that we'll talk about. So er maybe in, in like two words, can you talk about Apache Cordova here? Apache Cordova is just the fact that you can have a website, a web technology, some HTML pages, and you embed that in a native application running on devices like Windows Phone, but not only Windows right. Phone, that main subject today, yeah. that work on iOS, that work on Android, and since last week, that run on Firefox OS 2. Nice. <laughs> awesome. So there's also a couple other things we're going to talk about, uh, like WinJS and, and other things. So. <laughs> Before, once again, we jump into that, uh, one yeah. last slide uh, yeah. about the MVA community, uh, which is a huge, uh, huge repository of training for you guys online. Over 2 million of you have uh, now registered, and you can actually earn what we call the MVA points, 50 of them, yeah. uh, visiting that website, aka.ms slash MVA voucher, and enter this code specific to the session you're now uh, watching right now. And win. 50 points and win the 50 points. Yeah. Great. Okay. What, what is the day about? Oh, we have a lot of things today. We have a lot of speakers because we don't want to be alone presenting this stuff. We invite. They'll be, invite. They'll be, they'll be bored with French guys. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and sometimes the French accent can be a, an issue for you. So we invite some engineers from Visual Studio team, from WinGS, and, uh, to, to have something very animate. Correct. So today, the first module we're going to talk about, the both of us, is uh, uh, how you can bring your web skill and code to yeah. build apps for mobile platforms. Um, we'll dig into one way of doing that with web app templates. Yeah, what, is, um, what is web app templates? What is what? Well, we'll, we'll talk about it. I have an answer for you. OK. Um, okay. Then we'll, uh, we'll look into what we call the multi-device hybrid app extension for Visual Studio. Yeah, a That's very it. cool tool. Totally integrated in Visual Studio, but let's see with the guy who created the code yeah. for us. Yeah. So as as it's real life, you know, yeah. not everything works well the first time. Already. <laughs> <laughs> we call that le pays des bisounours in okay. French, yes. right? So that's not the case here. Uh, and so you will face some issues when bringing JavaScript, HTML5, CSS code into an app. And yeah. we'll talk about these issues, show some solutions to go through that. Um, the last two modules of the day will be a deep dive into WinJS. Yes, WinJS is very cool because it's very multi-platform, high performance, very nice things and you can use in Cordova as we, we, we are going to see it okay. today. 
And, and last but not least, we're going to bring Mr. David Catu. <laughs> for the uh, French guy. Another French guy, <laughs> sorry for yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, uh, David is the expert when it comes to 3D and WebGL. And yeah. Obviously, considering uh, the actual hardware performance, it's really interesting to consider WebGL, which is now cross-platform, because lots of the all of the mobile uh, browsers today support WebGL to build a 3D experience into your mobile app. Definitely, definitely. Let's get to it. Yeah, let's well, go. Long introduction. Model one from web to apps. But why cross-platform dev? Why doing cross-platform dev uh, is definitely the first topic we want to tackle. Um, obviously, why and then how. Yeah. Right. So, what are the options, and and really, what are the steps for bringing your web experience into an app? Apache Cordova being definitely the uh, the platform we want to talk more about today. Yeah. And uh, show some examples. You have some great devices and and tools and toys to to show us. So we'll go to that. Yep. And have these uh, nice apps demonstrated. So cross platform development using web technologies. Why and what is what does that mean? So we want to we want to narrow the discussion because when we talk about cross-platform development, you know, it can mean a lot of things. In our case, cross-platform in in that for today's talks is devices. We talk device platforms: iOS, Android, Windows Phone, Windows. We're yeah. talking these consumer platforms. We're not yet extending to the IoT or whatever else, even though. Even. Even though, uh, yeah, yeah. you'll hear about that <laughs> later on. Um, and when we talk about web technologies, we're talking about... CSS, HTML5, and JavaScript, yes. of course. And the word you're going to hear me say again and again is web standards. Yes. Right? Web standards, very important. Yeah, very important today, but let's see that later. Yes. <laughs> well, okay. So the first, the first question is, you were asking, why would you want to go cross-platform? There's some very obvious reasons. Um, I think the actual um, uh, you know, area we're working on has, has moved a lot. Today, a mobile application yeah. in is no longer about you know, the application itself. Yeah. It's about serving services, about accessing data information, and so on. Yeah. And in, in the context of cloud-first, mobile-first, I like to say cross-platform first, actually, because it's very important to be able to, to, to extend to reach more clients. Yeah, yeah. Having more devices connected? Yeah, for, for me, it's pretty simple. I won't write once my code and run everywhere in Android, iOS, or Windows Phone. Exactly. So, so, so that's the that's definitely the the, the bottom line. And, uh, like, but from from a more you know business oriented perspective, um, write once, deploy many is great, and run everywhere is great. And you need that. And the reason why you need that, another big reason uh, beyond selling your services to more customers, is the bring your own device phenomenon. So, oh, in, yeah. in, especially in enterprises, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's phenomena we observed since a couple of years now, and. Um, uh, become huge and huge. Even in Microsoft, you can see some guys coming with their own devices. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, and actually, as the guy de de deploying the application and the line of business application, you want to deliver a single experience. You want to go beyond you know, the, the OS itself and, and make sure yeah. that you can maintain that application and redeploy yeah. and fix and so on. Yeah, so yeah. that's and very important. You want to switch from device to another one. For yeah. example, if you are in a in a uh, in a factory, you have a small uh, uh, devices, robust devices, and you switch to a small tablet when you back in your office and this kind yeah. of thing. And you have, you want a continuum with your application. Perfect. That makes perfect sense. The other thing is going through the stores to extend your reach. Like like giving an app for side loading as a zip file doesn't work much anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you, you definitely go through the stores yeah. and therefore would like to still find a way to not have to reinvent um, you know, for it each will. of the platforms. Right? Yeah. And, and that next reason is definitely uh, a potential because you don't want, you don't have time for, or you can't afford to learn a new language and new tools, new technologies. Exactly. So that's exactly. something that there are a lot of differences in the native technologies to build app for iOS, Android, Windows today. And you might not want to actually have three teams working for the, each of the platforms. You might, you might not have the, the resources for that. And, and actually, well, longer term also, uh, you might want to go in a place where you are developing once and deploying many, as you were, you were saying. Yeah. 
This one is also related to what you're saying. Uh, you need to get to market fast and in many places at once. Uh, right? Imagine you have the last startup was the greatest idea for a nice service. If you're not on all the mobile platforms or at least on the major ones rapidly, your idea might just like not be something you can monetize at all. So you can definitely go there. And last but not least, why would you do cross-platform? Because you can. Because you can. <laughs> okay. Easy. Um, so what are the common options to yeah. do that? Yeah, there are several ones. Um, the, the, the oldest one is, of course, C++. C++ is everywhere, on every device, on every kind of OS. Of course, C++ is very standard, and I think uh, and Olivier and you are really uh, focused on the, on the standard. C++ is really standard things, except for the interface, except for the graphic library. Of course, you have STL with C++, and you can write your code and the potentially run in console mode in every platform, uh, depending on the compiler sometimes, but in every platform. But for the graphic interface, there is an issue at this time. Perhaps in the future we will see a new graphic interface multi-platform, mm -hmm. but at this time there is some initiative, very interesting initiative, and at Microsoft OpenTech we follow some uh, mm -hmm. more for creative developers than for the enterprise business, but something like Open Framework, you, mm -hmm. you can run on iOS, you can run on Android, you can run on Linux, Mac, and blah, blah, blah. So, C++ is a good strategy. Um, you have the, the, the power, you have close to the metal, you have the huge potential of high performance. Mm. You have a learning curve for C++, of course, it's not so easy mm. as the web technologies. And again, this lack of graphic interfaces uh, perhaps stop the C++. But in the future, I will not be surprised if C++ reborn with a new graphic interface, but let's see that. Interesting. That's yeah. not a spoiler. No. Uh, the, the second language option, if, if you take it from the language perspective, would be C Sharp. Yep. Uh, so obviously on Windows platform with .NET, C yep. Sharp is no, definitely not a good only, choice. Not only on, on Windows platform, because Xamarin Project provide uh, a, a C Sharp on other platforms. Yep. It's a very interesting project, and we work closely, Microsoft yep. work closely with this guy now. It's very nice to see. And, and back to uh, the topic that obviously these are not the only options, right? Once no. again, we're not trying to narrow like the world. We're talking about the most common ones. And uh, HTML5, the web technologies are definitely a good option. And, and we'll see why in a minute. And a solution to implement that is something like uh, that we call a hybrid application, a mix of native and, and web platforms. We'll see how that, 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 that is exactly. built up, right? And exactly. that's what we want to focus on. Yeah. And actually, that's what... Uh, we want to talk about web technologies. So why would you go with uh, with web technologies for cross-platform? Uh, first, HTML5 is finished. Yeah, it's not a spoiler too, but you will. Yes, it is a spoiler because actually uh, it's not it's not it's a live event here, and yeah. in about 45 minutes you get uh, you get some more information about about HTML5 being finished. Yeah, yeah. So stay tuned. Stay uh, tuned check out the various uh, news feeds about HTML5. But we can consider that HTML5 is finished and the the working group started the HTML 5.1 work uh, right now. Okay. So we have a, a solid foundation for, to build the web of the future. We have a solid foundation to, where, to, to build the application right now. Mm -hmm. We have a, we have a really cross-platform thinking, really cross-platform technology, HTML 5, yeah. Great. And today, when you look at the modern um, you know, mobile platforms, all of them have an HTML5 compatible browser. So HTML5 is finished, and that's yep. great. At the same time, all these mobile platforms uh, are actually tracking these standards and implementing browsers that support these standards. So that means we have a common ground across exactly. these platforms. Exactly, exactly. And in the same way, HTML5 is ready for apps from enterprise to gaming. Yeah. Right, we're talking about line of business application. Yes. We'll talk about WebGL. Uh, so then that's the full spectrum of what. Yes, of yes. The apps. From the enterprise to the game, uh, HTML5 is all terrain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Technology>. <laughs> um, well, they can also consider uh, the fact that you can very easily theme or put a skin on your yeah. app to yeah. go cross platform. It can be interesting. We'll see scenarios where, where uh, that is needed. Yeah. Um, obviously, in the same area, having a responsive yeah. design, something that adapts to the various form factors. A tablet is not a phone. Now you have like these big, huge phablet phones uh, yeah, that yeah. are actually our new target. Yeah, yeah. So you need, to, you need to be able to adapt. Yeah, right? yeah. It's very cool because you can lost 
and you can spend a lot of time to adapt your application in different form factor with the this kind of design is automatic. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's cool. Great. Um, you also have the choice of giving an online or an offline or an experience that is mixed. Uh, and what I mean by that is that you can choose to expose a web page that is hosted on a server uh, in the cloud or something, or you can choose to have a pure offline experience, meaning that if the device is not connected, you still have a web experience locally because you have yep. local storage and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So that's really a, one of the things that, that you have options here with, yeah, with yeah. web technologies. And the offline, offline scenario are really important to consider when you write your application because, again, in the scenario you are in the factory, perhaps you are in a room without connection, but the application needs to still alive and you can yep. work on it. Yeah, exactly. There's two things that actually are, 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 are next in my list here. That are they're actually dear to MS Open Tech, Microsoft Open Technologies. Okay. So we are, yeah. we didn't mention that, but yeah, we, exactly. we we are actually part of the subsidiary, which role is to bridge the Microsoft and the non-Microsoft world. So the idea is to say, uh, when there's a technology mostly open source that doesn't work on, on Microsoft platforms, whether it's the cloud or the devices, we like to go out, contribute code, make that work on Microsoft platforms. Um, we also are looking into open standards, all right, yeah. because making non-Microsoft technologies running with Microsoft technologies implies that they talk to each other, meaning that working on open standards with the ecosystem, with the industry is very important to us. So here, uh, we're talking about the fact that there's a lot of existing reusable JavaScript frameworks. Yeah. And we are contributing to them to make them work on our platforms. Uh, but also, you as a developer can just go and pick because you know there's so many of them that are yeah. part of a, such a big, yeah. huge open source community uh, that actually it's just like go shop. And, and use them. Yeah, yeah. It's in, just back to, to the MS Open Tech subject because it's really interesting to see that you have today two French guys that live from Paris <laughs> to go to Seattle and bet on the open source at Microsoft. We really believe together um, at MS Open Tech that the future of Microsoft is around open source technology. That's why we invest a lot on this kind of technology like Cordova today. Yeah, and so and we know that that uh, you know web. Is, is a place where there's a lot of open source developers yep. and technologies and frameworks. And so we think that uh, actually web technologies to build cross-platform apps is great because of that emulation around the projects and the fact that if something doesn't work, someone will go and fix it if not yourself. So that's, that's pretty, gre pretty great. Yes. The last point is about, oh, so we have HTML5 everywhere, right? It's great. Um, some years ago, it was not that performant. Uh, it was something that was pretty sluggish yeah. and slow. It was just for web. Today, we have very powerful hardware. Exact. We have very powerful graphic hardware, even in few few devices like a phone. And uh, that's why, uh, for finishing the, the, the day, we invite David and um, talking about WebGL. Because WebGL in 3D, it's a real technology you can, you can use today in your application. So uh, think twice about performance issue because that we, you will see today uh, perhaps open a door about new kind of application for you. Great. Awesome. The WebGL, gaming, graphics, yep. actually is definitely yep. um, the last big topic. We, I'm sure we'll left aside a lot of other reasons oh, yeah. why HTML5 is great for uh, cross-platform development. However, I think we can, we can jump into another part here, uh, which is talking about what it takes to bring. Now, let's assume you want to do, well, we convinced you guys. So we, we want, we want yeah. actually uh, to, to, to help you drive from, you have an existing website or you have a strategy to go from web to your app. At a very high level, uh, this is how it's going to look like. You start with a website. I think it's, it's the, you know, the easy, the low-hanging fruit. Uh, you have a business, you have a service you want to sell, you go through a website. That's the best way to reach a lot of platforms, PCs, Macs, phones, tablets. Everyone has a web browser. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one piece of advice here is think web standards. It's yes. very important. Right? Ag agree with you. So different platforms to target. Yeah. The only common denominator here is web standards. Exactly. That you can count on and that you're sure of. The next step is going mobile, right? Yeah. So, like, what is specific to mobile versus web? <laughs> the size of the screen, uh, the the fact that sometimes you are you you are in no connection area, so you need some kind of stuff for the yeah. offline scenario. 
Okay, and so, so yeah, form factor, responsive design, yeah. mobile version. Once again, think web standards. These devices are running browsers that comply or not to web standards, so you definitely want to think about it. Yep. The next step, once you have a mobile version of the website, still pure online on the web, now you want to go with something which we call hybrid apps, right? You want to kind of mix and match the native and wrap, you know, HTML code into um, into into a, a native app, still having the content being online. We call yeah. that web context, right? Uh, so that's something that actually is illustrated uh, by the web app template um, for Visual Studio. That's one of the options. The what template? The what template. Okay. And uh, with David, we'll talk about that in, in about half an hour. And then once you, once you have that web experience wrapped into a native app, the next step, as you were saying, is going offline. Yeah. Deliver an offline experience. Exactly. Right? Being able to have a, an app totally you know, self-sustaining, standalone, no need for, no need for any connection, whatever. Uh, obviously, you want to have data connection, but you don't need it, right? Exactly. And so um, another thing which is important is accessing the hardware resources. Yeah. Yeah, if I want to access to my cam camera, to my storage, uh, diverse sensors, can I do it with a HTML page? page? Not all of them, because yeah. web standards are not all you know, uh, to that point right now. So I know there are some standards about defining how you access your hardware resources from a browser. Exactly. But we're not there yet. I mean, it's for HTML 5.1 or other versions. But you have a solution called Apache Cordova. Exactly, with the plugging. But let's talk yep. about that later. Remember, web standards. Oh, yeah, definitely. Very important. Remember, web standards is very important. I think you're going to hate me for saying web standards all the time. Uh, one last time, web standards, right? Um, when you're, when you're going to bring that code, that web code, into an app for a mobile device um, or for a PC, you're going to face issues, right? Not, nothing, as we were saying, is, is just as easy as you would expect it. So my first, my first advice is web standards, right? Yes. See, if you've, not, if you've not thought web standards, if you've thought about specifics, like adding vendor prefixes into your uh, web code, yeah. which can be very useful. Some browsers are more in advance, we'll say, or are, are trying to innovate in a certain direction uh, in advance to the others. And you might want to use these new features that these browsers offer. Um, and in that case, you start using things that only work in a specific browser, which is a shame when you want to go cross-platform. So when you're developing your, your, your web uh, experience, you definitely need to think uh, web standards. Exactly. That's very important. That will actually avoid Again. big issues. Yeah, yeah. And when we talk web standards, we talk HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, ECMAScript, W3C is, is actually a working group um, driving the HTML5 definition. So web standards. Okay, I'm done with web standards. Yeah. So what's the next not, not one? Not sure. Not, not sure. Maybe I'm going to bring that back. <laughs> okay. uh, what about the next one? About the next one, you, of course, when you run on the window, uh, you have different security context. One is uh, like a sandbox, and the other you have direct access to the platform. So we have to to to, to take caution about that, mm -hmm. and we'll see in the, in the JavaScript yeah, compa compatibility uh, the next pitch. No, 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 no the, the next one after the, the one, one after. after. Uh, what about this security issue, and what we can deal with? Yeah, definitely. Because we're talking about apps, right? So yep. basically running on a mobile device and potentially having access to your data, to your location. So there's some privacy issue here exactly. that you need yeah. to, 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 be, to be careful about. The sen as you were saying, the sandbox is not the same. It's no longer a website in a browser. Uh, another important point is the integration into the OS experience. How do you bring you know uh, an app that actually is compelling that will not be you know not looking good or and let me be blunt deliver an an an, an iOS experience onto a Windows Phone device or deliver uh, you know a Windows Phone experience onto something else uh, might not actually comply to what the the user is expecting. So you need to think about how you deliver a user experience, and at the same time you need to think about accessing the hardware resources. That's what we're saying, right? Yeah. So yeah. accessing camera, file system, uh, motion sensors, and so on. Yeah. So hooking up into the OS could be tricky. Exact, exact. Um, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, the right user experience is pretty important uh, because right now the, the, the people are well-educated and have some uh, 
you use application with right uh, ergonomy and this kind of stuff. So it's very important to focus on the design, on the ergonomy of the application, and of course, all these kind of sensor can help you mm -hmm. with the motion sensor, with the magneti magneto sensor, this mm -hmm. kind of yep. thing. Yeah. And, and uh, to, to extend a little bit on the um, on the user experience integration into the OS, you sometimes have for each of the OSs something specific to it that you might want to use. On yeah. Windows Phone, it might be the live titles. Yeah, uh, or other technology where we cover in a few minutes. Exactly. But uh, <laughs> let me not waste it. <laughs> but um, uh, you definitely want to consider specificities also for your yeah. app. Yes, you go cross-platform, but you want that integration into the OS to be, to be you know, fluid. So you definitely want to use some of these uh, features from the OS. Um, you'll see that something like Apache Cordova helps you using that. Uh, and we have other tools uh, we're going to talk yeah. about that yeah. can help you yeah. do that. Yeah. And that's the perfect segue to yeah. Apache Cordova. So what is Apache Cordova? Huh. Good, ah, question. good question. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's an open source project. Um, you can see the link on the on the screen. Um, this project supports all the major mobile platform today, even Firefox OS, uh, as yeah. I mentioned uh, earlier. It's a really mature open source solution, and uh, we just lived the PhoneGap day uh, last week in San Francisco. Yeah. So you just say you just say PhoneGap. So some some of you oh, might yeah. remember uh, yeah. Apache Cor Cordova as PhoneGap. So it's so people might confuse you know might be confused by what is what. Uh, so in a nutshell, Apache Cordova is the open source project uh, that is owned by the Apache Software Foundation. Exactly. And PhoneGap is a distribution of Apache Cordova by Adobe. Yes. Right? Yes. So, OK. OK. Just so, to clarify that. So yeah. but for today, we are going to talk about PhoneGap and Cordova, mainly Cordova, with the same meaning, in fact. OK, so uh, with, with um, this brilliant and vibrant uh, community, very, very active, we have a, a concrete project to port all your HTML5 and JavaScript from your website in a native application. Yep. That's the main goal of Cordova technology. Yep. And so Cordova is, is a, has been released at version 4 a, yeah. a couple a few days ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, the, it has evolved from being that little geeky toy thing to being something really serious. Um, and, and, and we'll show that uh, some very serious customers are actually now adopting Cordova to go cross-platform for line of business applications, but also for consumer application. And in terms of development tools, actually, um, you'll show some of the, of the tools that, that that allow the developer to go cross-platform from command line yeah. to a full integration into Visual Studio. Exact, exact. And th this kind of technology, yes, come from the command line interface, that the, the core technology of Cordova, but we are going to see in the future some integration in IDE. And the first one, the first of, 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 of the IDE is Visual Studio. And last week in, at PhoneGap Day, again, we have a good success about that because we are really deep inside the integration with, with Visual Studio and Cordova that enables some crazy scenario about iOS, Android, or Windows platform directly from Visual Studio. And you don't move from Visual Studio. That's very important. And of course, all the power of Visual Studio is for you. Uh, you can use profiling tool. You can use source code tool. Fine. You can use everything from Visual Studio for the Cordova project. Yeah. Yep. There's another piece of a very interesting uh, you know, thing about Cordova. Uh, it, it's related to web standards. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so the idea is that. Um, Cordova explores a uh, way for web code to access hardware resources and so on. And they, they define an API for that. So from JavaScript code, you have a, a Cordova API to access uh, you know, camera and other hardware resources. And that's the same API across, across the platform, because that's the way they define Cordova, and that's the way uh, Cordova is designed. The philosophy of Cordova, when you talk to the uh, main Cordova creator, is to actually go away. 
The idea is to be a, a, not only a, a solution for people to build cross-platform apps, but also to be a playground for web standards where we can experiment APIs that can then be integrated into a, a, a yeah. spec for HTML5 JavaScript and then be integrated into the browsers themselves, into the uh, rendering engines that are in, in the app platforms. So this is a very interesting place to, to look into. And actually, you will notice if you look at the Cordova ecosystem that all the major browser uh, manufacturers or builders are actually in the community, contributing, working together. It's a very fascinating thing to look into, to work with, because you can fight with someone, and then when you're in the Cordova ecosystem, it's just like all together trying to make that work. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. pretty, uh, it's pretty yeah. amazing. That, that's the main reason why MS Open Technology is working on Cordova, because we really see the standard aspect, the cross-platform, and the fact that it's open source, uh, it's very, very interesting project for yeah. us. That's why we invest yeah. a lot in it. And it happens yeah. so that other groups at Microsoft are now interested, Visual Studio, for that integration of Cordova to build apps for not only Windows, but also iOS and Android. Yep. And we'll have a really nice demos about that later on today. Uh, but, uh, but also um, a team like WinJS, right? They're a cross-platform UI and data binding JavaScript framework. And they are very much interested in seeing how they can interact into a Cordova app. And we, we will have some demos about that also today. Yep. And uh, last but not least, uh, the Windows team is interested, right? They do see Cordova as a, as a very viable uh, you know, solution to build cross-platform apps on Windows and other platforms as well. So that's, uh, that's a very interesting thing to look into. Yeah, that's why we want to organize this uh, MVA talk about Cordova because about Cordova, it's yeah. something emerging at Microsoft and outside Microsoft and yep. you have to look at, at there, there are also, when we talk about cross-platform development with web technology, a couple of other things we recommend you look at. Uh, WinJS is one of them. Yep. You can get information on buildwinjs.com. You'll have a full hour session, about well, like 45 minute session today about that. Uh, it's an open source technology and it actually is cross-platform. Used to be something designed uh, for Windows, but now went outside of Windows and allow you to, to, to use it on other platforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the performance are really incredible. Just have a look at it. Yeah. Yep. And the last one? TypeScript. TypeScript, it's uh, the last language create, created by Anders Edsberg. It's very, very smart. It's a way to have a strong typing uh, around JavaScript. And the output, uh, it's very important to understand that, the output of TypeScript is JavaScript, human reading, readable JavaScript. So you can use TypeScript to have a strong typing, to have all the tools you need, all the, the control when you write the code and produce a very clean JavaScript, a very standard JavaScript. So it's very yeah. useful and you can use TypeScript in any platform. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Let's see some examples. We've been talking a lot. Yes. So I guess it's time to uh, check out a couple of examples. Yeah. Um, I'm going to here, um, you know, start some of uh, the Cordova applications that are on the um, Windows Phone Store. So let me start uh, this guy here and project my screen. Uh, so you have here a Windows Phone device. Yep. And the first app I want to show real quick is SoCal. Social. So I don't remember how we say that. It's a Microsoft app, <laughs> uh, very interesting uh, app that looks into a way to do social media uh, that is different. And here, what you see is just a Cordova application. You will have the exact same experience on iOS and Android for that application. It integrates media. It integrates a lot of features. That's a Cordova application that gets data from, uh, from a cloud service. And you can see that you have animations. You have an experience that is very much native-like. It's something that if you didn't know it was a Cordova application, well, you would you would not guess it. It's like pretty integrated, pretty normal uh, experience. The second one I have, it's uh, dear to my heart. It's um, an app that we, uh, we actually worked with um, uh, some you know, community out there. In order to, uh, to extend it, it was an iOS and Android only app. And uh, we, we met the guys at a phone gap day. Yeah. Event. And talking to them, they were telling us, yeah, well, no, we're not targeting Windows Phone because it doesn't support uh, Cordova. 
And we're just like, no, that's not true, actually. Um, MS Open Tech is contributing, and look at that. And the guys didn't even know, didn't even look into Windows Phone as a solution. And it took them something like a couple of weeks to get the app published on the store uh, with all the features that were available. So this one is about sharing your, uh, it's a, like, kind of a, beer drinking social app um, I've not been really good you see no distinct beers badges what not uh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have two usernames one for the demos was nothing in there and one was my real life uh, anyways so that's the second app once again, very much integrated into the, uh, the, uh, the overall experience of Windows Phone um, you have a, a tile that is live and, and, and things like that but the idea is to show that here, an app that was for iOS and Android, developed using Cordova, has been ported in a couple of weeks only uh, onto, onto Windows Phone. The last I want to show, uh, before we switch to maybe more sexy demos of yours, uh, is Browser Quest. It's uh, for those of you who have uh, some, you know, nostalgia of very old uh, pixelated games. Oh, uh, I love it. This one is uh, has <laughs> been developed. Uh, it's, it's basically was uh, ported to the web from some console, and then from the web ported to PhoneGap app. Okay. And it was super easy to do. And and I'm dying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <be careful. laughs> But you get you get the idea here um, of of how easy it is to um, actually go from web to uh, to an application using Apache Cordova, and I think you you have a couple more I would say advanced demos. These were pretty pretty you know basic type of apps. Uh, so uh, I guess you have some of the of, of the demos you've been building available. Yeah, um, on my on my screen you can see my 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 phone right now. And uh, the first demo I want to show you today, it's uh, this uh, little game. Uh, in fact, it's a Coco Studio, as you can see. The, um, it's a Coco Studio game. And Coco Studio engine uh, provides two, uh, in fact, two engines. One is C++ and cross-platform engine C++. And one is uh, HTML. And of course, when I saw that, I think, oh, can I build a Cordova application with that? Of course, I can. So it's a teeny one, funny. Sometimes oh. it's okay. Looks oh, I did. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, with sound and, and, and everything in it. So it's pretty cool to see that Coco Studio can be used in a Cordova context. And it's important to see and to know that this night in China, there is a very important conference about Coco Studies, mm -hmm. announcing the V3 and the support for this kind of thing. Awesome. So web technology using uh, physics engine and, and, exactly. and so on, encapsulated into a Cordova application. You right? just say physics. Yes. Let's look at the physics here. In fact, this application is built on Babylon GS, and we'll see Babylon GS later in a, in a, in a, in a day. And that you, you, are going, you are seeing right now, it's just WebGL on a Windows Phone 8.1. Because the last version of Cordova 3.6 from Microsoft Fusion uh, merge with the 4.0 you mentioned mm -hmm. have the support for WebGL, so you can have some cool application and with, with the 3D and this kind of this kind of thing. Yeah. of course. That that makes me think actually. Sorry to interrupt you. So yeah, yeah. I just saw on that app that you were touching and you had this kind of like virtual joystick appearing. Yes. There's one thing we didn't mention, which was uh, in in the the way you interact with a with a mobile app today. Um, in the web, it's mouse and keyboard, but on devices, it's touch that enters yeah. into the game. It's touch and sensor. You you will see a lot of game or a lot of application was the, was just moving the 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 the, yeah. the phone. So, and of so that's one of the other problems you need to look into because yes. today all the platforms do not treat touch and pointers the same way. So we have some interesting discussions, but that's for another MVA, I guess, yeah. about about you know thinking how people will interact with your application and adding a layer in between to have a standard way to accept the touch and the pens and the mouse events into your web application in that case. Exact, exact. Um, you, we just saw on a funny application, a graphical application, and of course, if we have the, a new kind of camera, and Babylon provide me a, a new kind of camera, you can have a scenario with this kind of stuff, the, 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 the VR cardboard from Dodo Case. So nice. let me start my application. In fact, it's exactly the same application that 
except that I stop the, the engine, physics engine, and I can look inside. Nice. <laughs> yes. Wow. It's so people, people don't see it, but uh, oh, it's a 3D simple. rendering through yeah. the, uh, the cardboard thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Come simple. back, Eric. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that I, I just want to share with you this kind of possibility. It's very cheap and very useful. You can have a very nice yep. experience with, with that. And you would, you would deliver the same experience using an Android phone or an iOS device. Exactly. Uh, they are WebGL compliant, exactly. and so you can deliver that same experience. Uh, they have to fit in the cardboard uh, VR yeah. um, thingy, right? So the last uh, application I want to share with you today, it's a bit tricky for a French guy. <laughs> 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 you will understand immediately why. Okay, I will start here Cortana. You know Cortana, it's a digital assistant for Microsoft Windows Phone. And I will ask Cortana something about Phone God Day. Why? Because during the Phone God Day last week, we produce a new plugin for, for, for Cordova, a plugin Cortana. And with this plugin, developer can code application, we, and Cortana can call the application, start the application, and go in the application in, in particular point to respond to your question. So basically, you can have Cortana start an application with parameters yeah. that are the result of a search, right? Yeah. That, that it does, that's great. Exactly. So, uh, let's see it. Okay, <laughs> let's jump, let's jump no, on the no, swimming pool. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Phone gap day, show me the Microsoft. Oh, no. Uh -huh. Phone gap day, what is the next session? Yes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So as you can see here, I asked Cortana something about phone gap. And um, Cortana start the application I created with Cordova. Show me the here the, the, the agenda of the day uh, 24th October. It's mm -hmm. past event, yeah. but uh, the principle is here. Um, of course, you created a syntax, a dictionary of words. And you can ask Cortana for the next session. You can ask Cortana for the session from Brian Leroux. You can ask uh, a lot of questions. You define in the dictionary in the XML form. You, uh, you, have to start, uh, you have to start once the application okay. to register that in your phone. And after that, it's okay. Cortana know the application and know how, how they can, she can, sorry, <laughs> she can use the application. Awesome. That's great. Eric, we have a few minutes left. Yeah. How about we do a command line demo of Apache Cordova? Yeah. Like, real quick. Yeah. Good point. Like, like the Cortana demo worked, so I guess you're good now. Yes. <laughs> yes. So here, uh, while you, you get that started, um, in a nutshell, the way developers uh, like to do Cordova development today is using command line tools. Exact. exact. I'm sure after today and, and after the phone gap day presentation, they will love to use Visual Studio as well because yes. uh, it offers a lot of options. Yes. But the way they do development today is command line. And very important to MS Open Tech is to make sure that we deliver to developers the experience they need. Exactly. So what you're going to show right now is the, the way you, you can target Windows devices using command line tools for Cordova. Exact, exact. So the first thing is to uh, call co sorry, Cordova to create an application, for example, MVA test. So uh, let's Cordova create that. There we go. Change the directory to MVA something. Okay, and here we have something uh, like some directory, like a wawawa directory containing the HTML uh, file for your application. Here directory for the plugin you want to have, uh, if you want to use, uh, we said, hardware or something like that. Mm -hmm. And here the platform. Of course, you can have multiple platforms. That's the main okay. subject of today, uh, like iOS, Android, or Windows. So let's add a new platform here. Uh, so, Cordova, platform, platform, oops, uh, remove my uh, box uh, <laughs> slope, <laughs> and I want to add, of course, platform windows. Yeah. So you would do the same thing for Android, right? As in, um, oh, I think it's platforms. Add, yeah, no, no. Cordova, platform, platform oh, yes. add, add, oops, windows, there you go. 
Okay, it is. So what it's what it's adding right now is a uh, a Visual Studio solution, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the error was nice because you see here what the different platform are present in my machine. Okay. In Cordova, awesome. Uh, and which platform I can uh, yep. I can select. In this case, I just add a, a new platform uh, for for Windows, and okay. now I can ask uh, Cordova to build the application okay. itself. Cordova build Windows. Okay. So it's actually building the binary based on the Visual Studio solution. So it's exactly. basically scripted exactly. uh, the, the, the thing. And it would be the same for Android, right? Exact. Great. Um, and we'll see. The same for each platform you see here. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's one specific thing, though, which is uh, the, way, the way it's going to be done for iOS from a Windows machine. And we'll see that later today. It's very interesting how you can use Visual Studio and the tools that are part of the, uh, the multi-device hybrid extension for Visual Studio to not only target uh, Android and Windows, which are supported locally with local SDKs, but also iOS, which happens to not be something you can develop uh, yeah. on Windows. But we have a solution that's great. So you built the application for Windows. And now we can just, just run the app. Great. I can just run on Windows device, yeah. or on Windows uh, machine, or yeah. on Windows device. Yeah. Let's try that. And so the web developer would actually work in that dub 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 folder that was that you like you showed in the first uh, uh, in in the first folder and and would just edit his HTML5, JavaScript, CSS exactly. code in his favorite uh, code editor. Yeah, device is voilà. ready. Et voilà. Et voilà. <laughs> awesome. The application Great. is built, running well on, on Windows. OK, this application is just a hello world. And uh, we can do exactly the same on the phone, but I see the time is fly, flying. And That's good. Correct. Awesome. So we'll, I think we'll, we'll stay there, and we'll have more Cordova demos coming. Um, yeah. we, uh, we, uh, we definitely invite you to stay around. Yeah. The next session is about Windows app template, yep. and uh, we will talk about how you can bring that web experience, website, and make it available through the, the Windows Store, in that case, for phone and, and Windows PCs uh, using the what. Exactly. Thanks very much. See you later.